and child murder in the United States. However, we want to recognize that this is from beginning to end a Christian victory. Christians are the ones that have been at the forefront of the battle against child murder in the Western world. 9.5 million deaths of human beings unborn in their mother's wombs in the UK alone. That's more than died in any Nazi death camp and it is only dwarfed by the horrors of the communist gulag. The death centres of the liberal progressives that hack and snip little children to pieces in their mother's wombs can now be stopped in states in the USA. Those centres that pour the equivalent of acid or explode human life in vacuums can now be stopped because governments in the states can do so. But what can we learn as Christians from the victory of the pro-life movement? It teaches us as Christians, it teaches us that, talking about pro-life, it's talking about, what does it teach us ladies and gentlemen? It teaches us the importance I will take questions in a moment. I'll take questions in a moment. It teaches us the importance as Christians of seizing control of the commanding heights of society. I need water, bro. What are those commanding heights? Government, the judiciary, religious institutions, arts and culture, economic institutions. All of these systems shepherd our lives and form our understanding of what is right and what is wrong. Because we had a president in America willing to put Christians who are pro-life in the Supreme Court, we have managed to strike at the heart of Roe v. Wade and a genocide and a holocaust against the unborn. It shows that if Christians become political and if Christians in politics work with Christians in the judiciary and work with Christians in economic systems and legal systems and cultural forums that we can build a mass movement that shepherds society away from injustice, away from sin, and towards virtue and righteousness. These lessons that we've seen the fruits of in the decision about Roe v. Wade, we can apply also to other issues of Christian concern. Other issues like the transgender movement, other issues like the definition of marriage, other issues like the persecution of our brothers and sisters. These are the kind of learn from the pro-life How? in the legal system, and so on. But make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to see in America is the hypocrisy of progressives. Note their violence against churches now. Note their violence against Christian pregnancy council centers in the USA. 
these same virtue signaling hypocrites who lecture us about tolerance, who lecture us about diversity, who lecture us about inclusion and equality, will this very Sunday be interrupting the Catholic Mass. This very week will firebomb Christian charities because these progressives are hypocrites. Christians, do not be afraid of the militancy of the left. Stand up to defend your churches. Stand up to defend our pregnancy centres and our charities. Stand up to defend our belief system and our community. There is nothing in the Christian faith that teaches us to be doormats and to be bullied by progressive militants. So, ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions before I move on? Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, one person from the group was over here. Any questions on the topic? Okay, I'm going to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against abortion is as old as time. The church from its earliest days has always opposed abortion. The Catechism of the Church says this, and I invite you to move a bit closer. Come in, come in. It's just shocking. Don't be shy. No one around you's got COVID. You're not going to die. And I'm sure everyone had a bath this morning. So come in a bit, so that people can walk past you at the back. I'm going to speak a little calmer. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states this. Since the first century, the church has affirmed the moral cured abortion. This teaching has not changed and remains unchangeable. Direct abortion, that is to say abortion willed either as an end or a means is gravely contrary to moral law. Earliest times sharply distinguished themselves from the pagans around them because the pagans around them, as they do today, were pro abortion and Christians were against abortion. The Romans and the Greeks in antiquity would take newborn children and leave them on the pavement to die from exposure. Infanticide was a common practice in antiquity. And the Christians would go and collect these children from the curb and take them into Christian homes and would then take care of groups of children in the very first orphanages of history. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, orphanages were a contribution of the Christian church. And they did this because of the Testament that recognizes that life begins in the womb because Elizabeth when she heard Mary's voice said why is it that the mother of my Lord should visit me which means that Jesus was the Lord of Elizabeth from conception not from birth the Didache the first document 
ever written after the New Testament. And the letters of Barnabas, an early Christian manuscript, condemn both the practices of abortion as well as did regional councils of the early church. Now, it's clear that we know more about embryology today than the early Christians did in their day. But it is also clear that the church had an unmistaken pro-life position from its very birth and has done since then to the day. One of my videos on TikTok is the early TikTok. Greeks believed that the soul was given at the this point million, after conception. But we Christians never Many believe that they justified Remember, abortion. The, the fifth century million, million church father Saint Augustine writing in the 5th century who knew about the philosophy of the Greeks and their idea of ensoulment idea of abortion he rejected it and believed it was committing homicide he added that God has the power to make all human deficiencies or lack of development in the resurrection complete so we cannot assume that the earliest aborted children will be excluded from eternal life in god the 13th century church father thomas aquinas made extensive use of aristotle's thought including the theory of the rational soul but he also rejected abortion as crazy as all Christians, we cannot compromise on the issue of being pro-life. This is a red line issue for the church. We cannot surrender an inch to the child murderers and their apologists who support the genocide of unborn children in abortion clinics. We must fight We must necessary to defend the unborn against a genocidal society that is polluted by a progressive political thought that contradicts philosophy, contradicts science, contradicts moral law, contradicts the Bible, and sacrifices children for the ego of women who don't want to take responsibility for their sexual acts and for men who don't want to take responsibility for their sexual acts. Any questions? Go on. In the marriage, she's healthy, the baby's healthy, she wants to have the child, and she has the choice of her own life and the life of her child. In case she were to become pregnant, she would die, and, or her child would live. What does the church say about the choice of who should live? Should the mother forsake her child, or should she be selfless and say, I well, let my child live and let me die? What, what would you say about that? So we must do in that kind of situation all that we can do to save both lives. However, there are examples and circumstances where that is impossible. And there is a principle within the church called double jeopardy, which is that if a pregnancy, or rather, let me put it another way, if there is a, con a medical condition requiring the removal of the womb, but that action will also result in the death of the embryo, because the end goal is not abortion, but to deal with another life-threatening condition, 
you can carry out the operation to save the woman's life even if it results in the death of a child. So there is an exception. Because, but yes, there but let's be clear. No, let's be clear. It's never to carry out an abortion. I never said it. Exactly. You're saying, but you still can, you still. So I'm saying, if the intent of the action. An abortion. JC, there's no need to bring the camera up. Sir, 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 one second, sir. Why not bring a new child to the earth? Listen. If there are no other What about the mother leaving other children? What if what do you What I'm saying is that there is absolutely no justification for an abortion in any circumstances at all, whatever. So it doesn't matter how many conditions and qualifications you introduce to the argument, there is no justification for murdering children in their wombs. What we should do is invest in the technologies and develop the treatments that would allow the saving of both the mother and ladies and gentlemen I have we are very close to creating artificial wounds we've already raised a lamb in an artificial womb We come at where we are forced to choose. Let me finish. Let me finish. And then let have you bread yet? Have you bread yet? The child yet? God want you to any other questions? Right, do you want to come back with a question? Have you read yet? Have you had children yet? Any other... Do you distinguish... ...of a suit? ...that you can... To blow your abortion is an act of violence from start to beginning. In the is one issue that never gets. Are we not once?